Yo, what's up? What's up, people? It's your man Marv One. I'm chilling with my man Mikey T, the movie star. Stay locked in for everything. So Benzino said Eminem won the first round in the early 2000s, and he's got this round in 2024. You know, and it seems like Benzino was calling for a Source Awards-like event to happen where Eminem would battle Benzino to determine the third round. You know, we've seen them go at it on diss tracks, but how would a three-round battle differ from that? Like getting Benzino to stand in front of Eminem and rap. Like, the, like that's what you're saying? Like, he would have to rap against them? That's what Benzino's suggesting, that they actually do a rap battle to determine the third round. Uh, I don't think that would be smart. <laughs> I don't think that would be smart. I don't think that would be smart pride-wise. I think business-wise, it may be smart. But after all these years of battle rap being as popular as it is and people always questioning, you know what I'm saying, how M could do in this current landscape, and for him to come back against Benzino just wouldn't make any sense, respectfully. What's your take on Eminem jumping back into battle rap? Like, could you ever see it happening? You once said he still wanted to battle. I mean, I, I definitely, I, I know the competitor, the competitive spirit in him definitely would allow him to do it. I just don't know if he would have the time, if he would have the time that it takes to to dedicate to 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 honing his craft like like really getting in that kind of bag like we're talking about a guy who sold hundreds of millions of records like that's the bag he's in to to stop that to write 10 to 12 to 15 minutes of material to remember and like ultimately it wouldn't make sense in a, in a like in a perfect not in a perfect world but like in a fantasy world it would be like oh yeah you know we got him coming back but it doesn't make sense. So I want to talk about Slaughterhouse, man. Can you tell me about working with Slaughterhouse? You were featured on the intro to their Shady Records debut album. How'd that all come about? Um, Being really, really good friends with Royce. Uh, Royce is definitely one of the people that's um, helped shape me as an artist. You know what I'm saying? Like, personally and, you know, before I knew him. Um, and the fact that they were recording when they were in Detroit, they were recording at, uh, my man, the nine Porter studio. So I was just always there and, you know, they were working and they just needed a quick two bars. I was there. You know what I'm saying? Like right place, right time. That's what that was. Like, how did you feel about Joe Budden, you know, kind of coming at Eminem being a harsh critic of his albums? Because they're technically label mates at that point in time. Um, I feel, I feel, I feel like, I feel like Joe has never been a person to bite his tongue. Um, and I just, you know, I definitely, I definitely, from the outside looking in, I, I think it would have made more sense to keep things, um, in house or to handle them. You know what I'm saying? Within a smaller circle. But I mean, it got the desired, it got the desired result, I guess. You know what I'm saying? It got to the person that he wanted to to hear it. So I guess it was worth it. I guess it was effective. I wanted to ask you about the 50 Cent 8 Mile TV show that they're talking about. Um, and I wanted to get your thoughts on the 8 Mile TV show. 50 said the show is in motion. Oh, I, I knew nothing about it. But no, I know 50 is doing really good television right now, though. Yeah. Like 50 is doing like he like the transition from him, the transition for him going from music to, to media has been seamless. So I definitely think if he's putting his name on it, it's probably going to be dope. Yeah, I think the show could be amazing. Um, Did 50 ever show up on the set of Eight Mile? I know that was right around the same time he signed. No, I don't remember him showing up on the set of Eight Mile. You know, 50 said the show would be there for Eminem's legacy. What is battle rap to Eminem's legacy? I think it's a really good I really think I think it's a really good springboard. I think it's a really good starting point. And I think him being able to take what he learned in battling and apply it to to actually recording and like selling records is, is a testament that talent 
is 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 the end all be all. You know what I'm saying? So he's definitely he's he's definitely cut from the cloth of a warrior. And I I definitely salute him and respect him for that. Yeah, how could that eight mile TV show go on television though? You know, I I, I could just it could be something big, I think, man. It could be something big if 50 could get that on TV. Just seeing how far Smack, you know, has come with URL, King of the Dot. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, mm-hmm. I also wanted to talk to you about Shady 15. It was uh, an album that you were a part of, Shady X5, Shady 15. On the record, Bane, you actually mm-hmm. did some production with Mr. Porter. Can you tell mm-hmm. me about that one? Man, I was super honored to have, to have helped him with that record. Um, I've always been one of the biggest D12 fans in the world, and you know when the opportunity arose, when the opportunity showed itself, you know, for me to contribute in any way, you know, I ju- I jumped at it, and you know, it worked out really well, and you know, I can say that I'm a platinum artist because of it by proxy. Was that just acting as a, you know, was it acting as a reintroduction record or maybe like a memorial style record? Oh, I, I, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure what the thought behind it was. I just think it was, I just think it was them giving fans what, you know, they've been wanting. <clears throat> Did you ever get offered a situation with Shady Records? No. Do you think 8 Mile helped brands like URL and King of the Dot, which you've battled on quite a bit? Um, Not those specifically. I think it helped battle rap in general. I think it helped bring battle rap to a more general public, which which I guess in turn probably did help them. But uh, I don't know if it helped them specifically. Like, I don't think like I don't think either of those businesses like took any models from the movie or anything like that. What did you think about Eminem ending up doing the Total Slaughter League? Um, I thought his involvement along with Slaughterhouse was was really dope. I think it I think it really showed um how much people how much people really are into battle rap, like everywhere. So I definitely think it was dope that they got that they took part in it. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that. To ask about this, you know. Uh... What do you think about new leagues like Remy Ma having Chrome 23, Easy the Block Captain having the trenches? I think it's really dope. I think it's really dope because it provides more opportunities for artists to be heard. You know what I'm saying? Like those who've been working on their craft, it gives them more outlets. So anything that can provide uh, some form of of light for artists, I'm 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 always behind it. Could you see yourself competing on Remy Ma's league? Uh, possibly, possibly. Lord willing, Lord willing. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going wherever the fights are. So yeah. So I wanted to ask you, man, why do they always say battle rappers can't make songs? They say they're great battle rappers, but they can't do a song. You know, Math Hoffa got that criticism. Goods, Loaded Lux. Uh, I just, I just think they may have been. At the time, I just think they may have been asking or listening to the wrong battle rappers. That's all. Like, battle rappers are the most, like, they're the most creative writers, I believe, like, in music. Because you always have to create, you have to create a new way to invent the wheel every time you decide to accept a battle. You're not able to really go up there and rehash. Like, you can't do a greatest hits like you can't go up there and spit something that you spit for someone else. So your mind is always moving. And I think that that shows, I think that that shows the, I think that that shows the creativity. I think another thing is a lot of battle rappers who are making music may not have been produced. Like a good producer can really, really like someone that you trust can really, really change the the trajectory of a song. So I just, yeah, I just think they were asking the wrong people at the at the at the wrong time. You know, you keep Proof's name alive through your battles, man. Can you tell me about the relationship that you had with him? I loved him. That was that was 
That was, you know, that was our Yoda. <clears throat> he was definitely our bridge from from being underground to being to 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 mainstream success. And the fact that his love for the culture was so pure, you know what I'm saying, and undeniable, he definitely gave us a, a, a blueprint on how to on, on how to move within the cultures. I truly, you know, definitely miss my friend for sure. And he was one of he was one of, if not the best battler that I'd ever seen. So you think proof would be getting down with the culture today? Oh, for sure, for sure, for sure. He was, he was a big reason that him and Bazaar were big reasons that we had battles here in the city before the Smacks and before the King of the Dots were coming here. Like it was them, like they were usually sponsoring battles out of their own pockets or, or just like doing events here. So. Definitely, definitely, I think, definitely, I think he would be a part of the culture. Oh, yeah, because battle rap grew in such a monumental way. You know, just rap in general grew, you know, mm -hmm. in such a monumental way. I could see, I could see what you're saying right there, man. I really appreciate the time on the interview. What do you got coming up in the near future, though, man? Are you working on your next, what do you got going for your next battle? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Right now, right now, I'm releasing an album called I'm Fine, Thanks for Asking. We just dropped the new single, uh, Rock Nation Brunch, featuring Freeway. So that's that's my main concern right now. Uh, you know, the battles will come, but the music is definitely where my heart is. Facts. That record with Freeway uh, is hard, man. Free had a, a crazy verse on there. He's like, Thank I you. forgot I fell asleep in the deep. <laughs> yeah, it was really good, man. I'm really thankful. I'm really thankful that I fostered relationships that will allow me to to call in favors like that. Did you guys do a video for that yet? Or are you planning on doing no, it? No, yeah, no, yeah. Laura willing, Laura willing, I want to do one soon. Yeah, I gotta say, man, I was pretty disappointed myself about the Rock Nation brunch being canceled, man. I definitely wanted to go. Yeah, man. I wanted to see, <laughs> like you were saying, yo, I wanted to see the the what was it? The the lakes. The Yeah, the, come on, the back, man. The lakes. Come on, man. Front, come on, man. Yeah. That's what I want to I want to see it. I want to see it with my own eyes. Facts, man. So uh, what's that project called again? Because I like how it actually goes with the the last, the Fat Killers project. Thanks for coming to dinner. Yeah, so yeah. So, Bye, so the, fat, the, the Fat Killer project was Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. Um, so this project is called I'm Fine. Thanks for asking. It's, gonna, it's, it's, it's dropping really soon on uh, Mellow Music Group. The single is out everywhere. So uh, I appreciate all support.